Hello, it's Charlotte and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. In today's video, we are going to be talking all about sitemaps and Squarespace SEO because this is something that can be a little bit mm, confusing, perhaps could be a good word for it for people who are learning about SEO, specifically if we're talking about SEO on Squarespace websites, because sitemaps can work differently depending on which website platform you're using. So again, Squarespace is a hosting platform and it's what I use and it's what you probably have your website on too if you're using it, but there are other website hosting platforms that you can build your site on like Shopify or WordPress or Wix or like Showit, any of those other things. So in this video, we're specifically talking about sitemaps on Squarespace and how that affects SEO. So if that's something you want to learn about, you want to know what is what is a sitemap? How does it work? What do you have to do, if anything? How does it change if you're making edits to the website? All that sort of stuff. Then you're in the right place and we're going to be going through that. And how this video is going to work is that some of it I'm just going to be like, talking to you and telling you the quick, like the quick little answers to these questions. But then also I'm going to be sharing my screen and showing you what this sitemap and some of the considerations look like on the back end of your Squarespace website. So you'll be able to follow along. So again, if that sounds like what you're interested in learning about, then you're in the right place and we'll get to it. So without further ado, let's dive right on in. So I'm going to share my screen here. Let me see, share screen. Good, good, good. And the first thing that I want to show you, oops, I'm on the wrong tab there, <laughs> is that I have a Squarespace SEO uh, checklist that you can download for free. And I'll link to it just down below here. But basically, this is a one page PDF that you can like print off, work your way through and make sure that you have everything covered when it comes to SEO on your Squarespace website, because maybe you're just a beginner who is getting started with SEO for the very first time, or perhaps you've been at this maybe a little while, but you want to make sure you haven't forgotten anything, then this SEO checklist will be really helpful for you. So you can learn all about it down below. It's been downloaded by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So again, trust you're in fantastic company with it. And um, yeah, go ahead, grab your copy and then thank me later <laughs> once you have it. Good. So now that we've kind of gotten that covered out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about the, I'll just put myself in the center here so that you can like see me while I'm talking. So let's talk a little bit more about the SEO or sorry, the site what is it called? The sitemap and what it is. So I wrote this down so I would say it to you properly. So don't mind me reading here. So first of all, what is a sitemap? A sitemap is a list of URLs on the site that tells search engines like Google or Yahoo or Bing, tells them about the structure of the content of the website. So basically what you're doing with a sitemap is you're telling search engines what pages are available for them to crawl and index and therefore return in online searches. So this is really interesting to see because, you know, you might have lots of, let me show you what I mean here. You might have lots of different pages on your website, but perhaps they're not all like in the main navigation, right? So like here, if I'm, for example, let me just keep moving all of this stuff here. Um, like if you're looking on my website, for example, you know, you might look and say, oh, well, it looks like there's only like, I don't know, three or four pages. However, if you look on like the back end, there's like lots of pages that I have here. And I want to make sure that like some of them or all of them are being indexed correctly so that again, these pages can come up in search results. And this is where having a sitemap is really helpful. So when it comes to having a sitemap, um, Squarespace, this is an important thing I want to let you know, Squarespace comes up with the sitemap themselves. So they take care of it all and they use the, like the .xml format. And that's kind of technical. You don't like really need to know that, but basically the reason why I emphasize this is that Squarespace will build the sitemap for you. This is not something that you need to go in and do you, you as like the website owner or the person that runs the website or the person who's interested in SEO, all of that kind of stuff, you will not have to go and create create a sitemap. Okay. Squarespace does this for you. And the cool thing about SEO or sorry about sitemaps here is that once this sitemap is in place, 
it can stay the same, but also it evolves with you. So what this means is, let's say if you come in here and you start adding new pages to the back end of your website, whether again, these pages are maybe in the main navigation, any of the not linked, whatever kind of things. If you add a new page, then this new page will automatically be added to the sitemap. Or on the flip side, if you delete a page or disable a page or something like that, then again, that will be reflected in the sitemap, okay? So this is really cool. Again, so not only do you not have to make one in the first place, but you don't need to manually edit the sitemap if you're making changes to your Squarespace website. And this is really good too, again, because Squarespace reflects these changes that you make to your website, they will be reflected in the sitemap usually within about an hour, but it could take up to 24 hours as well. So if you haven't noticed it like instantly, that's okay. Just sit tight. Again, Squarespace will take care of this for you and make sure that the sitemap is current, up to date, reflected, all of that sort of thing. Um, Okay, so another couple pointers that I wanted to talk to you about with this is that when it comes to the sitemap, we're only talking about public websites. So again, you can see here, like you can literally go to my website and it's a public site. But let's say you still had your website. It wasn't it wasn't live yet. It was a private website. Maybe you're still building it or something. Then in that case, the sitemap will not be submitted to Google for crawling and indexing. And same thing goes as well if you have a password protected site. Again, it makes sense that these, then your sitemap will not be available to Google to crawl and index. Again, because if it's a private site, then you obviously don't want that content showing up in an online search result. So we're only talking about sitemaps for public websites. And if we take that one step further too, an interesting thing to notice as well is that if you have a password protected page or if you have a disabled page or something like that, then those pages will not be included in the sitemap. So one thing to notice as well is that, you know, even if the page is down here in the not linked section, you might think, oh, not linked. Does that mean Google doesn't see it? No, no, no. It's the page. If it's a public live enabled page, it will still show up in the sitemap, even if it's in the not linked section. If the page is in the not linked section down here, it just means that it's not showing up like in the main navigation, right? So again, like the main navigation, yours might look a little bit different depending on what kind of website styling version, whatever that you have. But again, this is the main navigation. And I personally, again, have many pages that are in my not link section, but I still want them to be included in the sitemap and show up in online search results. So that's a good thing to see there. Okay. Now the next thing I wanted to tell you about sitemaps um, is what is not included in the sitemap? Because again, we just talked about, you know, all of the pages that are included. We talked about how if you edit them, add content to it, all that sort of thing, it'll be reflected in the sitemap. But let's see what is not included. And some of these we might have talked about. Let me just read my list here. Okay, so first off, number one in what is not included is the disabled pages, password protected pages, or pages hidden from search. Ooh, let me show you what I mean by pages hidden from search. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, pages hidden from search. This is a common thing that you might see if you have an index page. So an index page, let's use this one as an example. You have like the top level of the index page, right? You can see here in this, it's like an index page. This is the top level of the index page. And then these are the sub pages. And with the sub pages, you could open up the page settings. Let's see, did I click that? Yep. <laughs> There, I clicked it. Open up the page settings and go to SEO. And then you see here, often there's the option to like hide page from search results. And that's what I usually do for my sub pages in the index pages. I have another video that explains that why. Um, but basically it's that you just don't want any of those pages, the sub pages in the index to be um, crawled in index as individual pages. Instead, you only want them to appear as the page appears in its entirety. So that's what I mean by pages hidden from search. Um, okay, the next thing that is not included in the sitemap is old URLs used to create URL redirects. And again, I think I have a video about URL redirects, so I'll leave a link to that. Um, but again, that makes sense, right? You wouldn't want an old URL for a non-current page. So again, makes sense. Third thing is the style information. 
pretty straightforward. Number four, the URL for uploaded files. Again, that makes sense because you probably don't want people just accessing a file without like you want them to access the page that the file is maybe accessed from or something. You don't want them to just go straight to the file. So again, making sense of how people use the internet and what kind of content you want them to see in a search result. Uh, next thing is code blocks and the embed block content. So again, pretty straightforward too on that front. Most people um, don't really have to worry too much about that unless you're really getting crazy. But you know, for the average Joe, we have something a bit there. And I do have a video that talks a bit more about code in Squarespace SEO. So I'll link to that one up above. And then last but not least, the final thing that isn't included in the sitemap, the Squarespace sitemap, is the individual URLs of pages in an index page. So again, kind of going back to what we looked at before, the individual pages in an index page are these like sub pages that make up the index page. Again, they only are crawling and indexing and submitting for the sitemap, the top level of the index page. Again, that makes sense. It's what we want to see. So that is everything that I wanted to go over with you about the sitemap and how it specifically works on a Squarespace website. And so now you can see a little bit more about how it works in SEO too. So again, I hope this reassures you that you do not need to do anything for the sitemap to be created. This is not something you need to learn how to do yourself. It's not something you need to update or manually submit or something to Google anytime you make changes to your website. It's all taken care of. Again, this is one of those things I love about Squarespace is that they are doing this technical heavy lifting for you. This is a wonderful feature. Um, and it's great for, you know, whether you're a beginner at Squarespace SEO or you're just kind of like, you know, a, a casual user, or if you have like a big, massive company built on Squarespace, that works too. But like, maybe didn't know this about sitemaps. So there you go. So if you liked this video, feel free to like it or give it a thumbs up. You can leave me a comment down below as well to let me know if this was helpful, if you have any other questions. Um, and take a look at the other videos that I have here on my YouTube channel or on my blog, all the resources I have on my website. There's so much content for you about Squarespace and SEO and online business and marketing and all of that jazz. So take a look there. And again, before you leave, don't forget to grab a copy of the Squarespace SEO checklist. I've left a link to it down below. You can grab it. And that is it. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. And I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.